All right, and welcome back to Whiteboard Gematria. I'm your host, Dallas. Let's get to it. Let's sit down here, kids. Let's uh, let's take a look at some of these books. I haven't been haven't read to you in a while. Let's uh, let's take a quick look and see what you kids are reading nowadays. We'll go with uh, the leading global illustrated uh, book publisher, the Quarto Group which creates a wide variety of books and intellectual property products with a mission to inspire life's experiences, who produce a many formatted uh, uh, products for adults, children, and the whole family. They are even, uh, where is it, listed here on the bottom at the London Stock Exchange. Obviously a very reputable and high upstanding company who we are going to look at one of their Authors and illustrators, Tom Jackson and Christina Gucci, uh, in order to see that they have the highest of quality designed into their books. Christina again is an illustrator, however you say her last name. Living and working in London, England, her distinct style of hand-drawn characters and typography creates surreal worlds filled with hybrid creatures that won her a bronze award, Best of British Illustration, in 2009. Christina has also created in installations for Victoria Revealed, a permanent exhibition in the Kingston Palace in London, and has been featured in the prestigious D&DA Annual. Only the best for our children. So what did they produce? The What's the Issue series tackles engaging, thought-provoking subjects chosen from the headlines and public debates. What's the Issue asks, what's all the fusses about? Presents the key facts, reviews what's at stake in each case, and weighs the pros and cons. The goal of the series is to help young people understand difficult concepts, provide them with the tools to inform with their own opinions, and help them to see and influence changes within our society. So what's the issue? What's the issue? Future humans. So what do we see when we take a look into our children's books? What are we going to read today? Well, let's take a look without the glitz and glamour. We're going to read in this children's book, The Future Human is You, uh, hello, everybody. The evolution of you, intelligence in the mind, sleep, making memories, personal identity, living together, wealth and status, the group of individuals, medical powers, cosmetic procedures, smart and stupid drugs, genetic modifications, clones, uh, aging and di- death, nanotechnology, bioprinting, cyborg enhancements, uploading robotics, AI, superintelligence. Is this a simulation? Post-human species, pros and cons, mind map, what the... All I can say is, what's the issue? Wow, that's quite the issue. So they do get right into death, and start talking about cardiac death and brain death. Telomere is the key to aging in the genes. Uh, Particular genes give some people healthy, youthful bodies, even in old age. All that interesting stuff, which leads to a quick teaching on Greek mythology. The Greek goddess of the dawn, Eos, fell in love with a mortal human, Tithonus. She asked the king of the god Zeus to make her boyfriend immortal. Zeus agreed, but still punished the pair for their request. And it goes on to talk about that. even brings up this, the elixir of life. What the life and death and for centuries people have believed in the philosopher's stone, a magical substance that could turn lead into gold. Wizard like the uh the grand deception, right? Aren't they exposing all this stuff? The you know, they're just telling it now. The the grand deception is well you know, that's what this is. If this is not indoctrination, I don't know what is. They're literally telling everybody everything that we've been researching. Do you want to live forever? If you never grew old, what would you do with your time? Would it make a difference if you were the only immortal person, always meeting new people, or would you want everyone to be immortal? 
Well, welcome to nanotechnology. Imagine a machine so small it could be injected into your body. This is nanotechnology, where devices are measured in the nanometers. That's billionth of a meter. Such a machine, let's call it a nanobot, would be around the size of a virus, and it could travel around the body, in the blood, and go in and out of cells. It might sound like science fiction, but nanotechnology is already a real thing. We have to wait for nanobots, though. Nanobots? What are those? Well, nanobots will look more like an atomic caterpillar or a molecular egg whisks than miniature androids. Nanoengineers take their inspirations for designs from experimental nanobots. The ex experts call these nanites. From complex molecules in our cells such as proteins and DNA. These are large molecules made by stringing together small ones called nomoners. Mo uh, moners, whatever. By assembling the right one in a very specific order, nano-engineers have made nanoscale switches, propellers, tweezers, and even nano-car that rolls on four wheels. Now imagine nanomedicine. Nanomedicines could carry powerful drugs into the body, perhaps inside a cage of atoms to prevent it uh, attacking healthy body parts. The machine would be programmed to have a padlock which is only opened by the unique chemical tags in the drug's target, such as a cancer or virus. Also, nanobots might work like construction workers to assemble sections of nanotubes made from rolled-up graphene into long pipes to repair severed nerves or damaged blood vessels. It's fascinating stuff. I thought all this was just conspiracy. Why is this in a kid's book? It just makes me wonder. Gecko feet. Geckos can stick to any surface, enabling these lizards to walk around on the ceiling as easy as the ground. The stickiness comes from billions of nanoscale hairs that each grip a little and together with a, they grip a lot. A nanotechnology called a gecko tape uses nanotubes to copy this system. Gecko tape shoes and gloves, or even a coating on the skin, might allow you to climb walls like a gecko or a spider man. Wow. Promises of the superpowers. Nanotechnology is already used in some unlikely places. Sunscreen blocks out dangerous rays from nanoscale particles of zinc or titanium oxide. See, it's normal. It's completely normal. Would you want nanobots in you? How would you feel about nanotechnology working inside your body? Is it okay so long as they help you? Would you worry that they would be put there without your knowledge or permission? What a question for these times. And interestingly enough, graphene. A lot of nanotechnology will use a form of pure carbon called graphene. Graphene atoms are arranged in interconnecting hexagons that make a sheet just one atom thick. Graphene is super strong, it conducts electricity, and it can be formed into tubes and balls. The future could be made from graphene. Bioprinting. The invention of the printing press was one of the most significant in human history. After all, it made this book possible. Just as society is becoming more paperless, printing has been reinvented to build 3D objects. 3D printing technology was developed to use blobs of plastic, but it works the same with any gloopy liquid. Even the cells of the human body. Could it be that one day we will be able to print body parts? Let's find out. And then they go in to explain it. In this children's book. Cyborg enhancements. Forget about improving the body using its own biology. Let's go bionic. Bionics are mechanical body parts that replace and improve on the natural version. Yeah, why not? Let's just get an exoskeleton. Well, they're just devices worn outside the body that take over or add to its movements. This kind of tech is being developed to help uh, paralyzed people walk again. Military versions will allow soldiers to carry heavier packs and march faster for longer. Yes, because that's what it's for. It's for carrying stuff. Exoskeletons might not be robotic levers and motors attached to arms and legs. They could be a skin-tight bodysuit made from fabric that works like muscles getting shorter and pulling on the skeleton. Top contenders for making artificial muscle fabric include plastics that twitch when electrified. Muscles could also be made from bundles of spider silk, which shrinks when wet, expands when dry, and is stronger than steel. Surgeons often have 
to use their sense of touch to feel around inside the body without a good view. This must be very hard to feel your way through those slippery inwards. A cyborg system has been developed to help surgeons wear electronic pads on their fingertips. These create a tingling sensation when they touch some slimy guts, enhancing the surgeon's sense of touch. Let's move into augmented reality. Because if there's one thing that your children need to be studying is augmented reality. Also known as mixed reality, this is one of the core skills of cyborgs. Human senses are combined with information from elsewhere via sensors on the body or through connections with other cyborgs or the internet. The AR will relay information in the form of text and pictures in their vision or as additional sounds, or it may use the other senses. Perhaps AR could create a bad smell when the air is polluted or a simple taste of items is taken away, uh, taken away off the menu. Silent speech, also known as telepathy. A lot of promises with this future. Well, what's the issue? Let's deal with all the major issues that's going on in the world today that all you children need to worry about. Climate change. Fake news. Hackers. You know, all the big problems that all you kids need to be thinking about. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which, in all of its horror, will show clearly the na- to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, orange of sav- or- origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens are obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out into public view. Lucifer. Lucifer just dethroned clickbait and claimed a highly coveted honor on Netflix. The popular series just landed the number one spot on the streaming services list of most watched shows. Lucifer, the number one show on Netflix, smashes the ratings with over a billion views. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. That was Christian Bale. Bell or Bale became especially used for the Babylonian god Marduk and when found in Assyrian and Neo-Babylonian personal names, as mentioned, uh, allowed and the alias lord of Baal or Baal was used instead of Bell, used as for Marduk among the Babylonians. The Christian Baal. Uh, thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. And the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the Prince of Air. Where in the time past ye walked according to the Prince of the Power of the Air and the Children of Disobedience. Walter Cronkite, legendary broadcast journalist of the United States of America. I'm in a position to speak my mind, and by God, I'm going to do it. <laughs> First, we Americans are going to have to yield up some of our sovereignty. That's going to be, to many, a bitter pill. Today, we must develop federal structures on a global level to deal with world problems. We need a system of enforceable world law, a democratic federal world government, most important, we should sign and ratify the Treaty for a Permanent International Criminal Court. Matt Robertson has written in a book a few years ago that we should have a world government, but only when the Messiah arrives. <laughs> he wrote, and literally, any attempt to achieve world order before that time must be the work of the devil. 
Well, join me. I, I'm glad to sit here at the right hand of Satan. The Church of Satan. Founder, Anton LaVey. As a cabal. And also author of the Satanic Bible. Anton LaVey. Big friend of the Hollywood scene. And also big friend of this guy. Talking to Dr. Aquino and his wife. Um, who, you are a lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. Correct. Now, and how does the Army feel about you being head of the Temple of Set? The Army has known about my religion for um, uh, the entire span of my Army career, which mm -hmm. began in 1968. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, there was a reasonable amount of curiosity, as there has been all the way along, mm -hmm. with um, what exactly is this strange and unusual thing. And I've uh, talked about it in much the same way that I've talked here today on your show about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, the Ar Army has paid uh, very little attention to it, the same as it would to anybody who is, say, a, a follower of Hinduism or of um, Buddhism or any other slightly unusual religion today. So you just go about your army duties and it's fine and... and mm -hmm. Okay. Intelligence agencies have infiltrated and created some satanic groups. With the resurgence of these groups beginning in 1966, particularly with the birth of the Church of Satan, founded by Anton LaVey. LaVey studied criminology in San Francisco and worked in the San Francisco Police Department Crime Lab. He also worked as an informant for Interpol. Prior to the Church of Satan, LaVey ran a group called the Magic Circle. LaVey's most famous associate is the National Security Agency General Michael Aquino. At the time of his membership in LaVey's group, Aquino was an army specialist in intelligence and psychological warfare. In 1973, he became the executive officer of the 306th Psychological Operations Battalion, contemporary with his founding of the Church of Set. General Michael Aquino wrote, From PSYOP to Mind War, the Psychology of Victory. Aquino's thesis stated that enemy populations could be subdued by inflicting a state of psychological terror and feelings of imminent destruction. He discusses the use of psychotronic weapons or electromagnetic weapons that influence the mind. Capitulation could be induced without firing a shot by extremely low frequency signals piggybacked on broadcasts of radio, TV, or microwave communications in order to influence and manipulate the thoughts and feelings of the target population. During the 1960s, he was prominent in the Church of Satan and a close friend of Anton LaVey, until he started his own Church of Set. A police intelligence report dated July 1, 1981, reads, quote, The Church of Set is a group of hundreds of members that operates on a national level. Michael Aquino is the official head and rules through a council of nine who are, in fact, his lieutenants, unquote. At least two members of the Council of Nine at that time were members of Army Intelligence. In the late 1980s, Aquino was accused by the San Francisco Police Department of being involved in a satanic child molestation ring centered on the daycare at the Presidio military base where Aquino was stationed at the time. Probable victims numbered at 68, many of whom had contracted venereal disease. 22 families filed $66 million in claims against the Army, claiming that criminal charges against Michael Aquino were dropped due to pressure from the Army. General Aquino admitted to renting the German castle where the Nazi SS were formed and reenacting the secret ceremony among fellow intelligence officers dressed in full Nazi regalia. It is important to remember that General Aquino is first and foremost a military intelligence officer with over 40 years experience in counterinsurgency operations and an expert in psychological warfare. General Aquino's psychological warfare campaign 
has started or infiltrated cults and other closed systems as part of a concerted effort to control large numbers of people and to destabilize the centers of constitutional and legal authority both here in the United States and in other nations. This methodology is part of a concerted plan that spans several generations. The Church of Satan in which you can be a registered member and grow into a Satanist, grow into a witch, grow into a priest, grow into a magister, or grow into a mega. Make America great again. We will now have an invocation by Iris Fontana from the Satanic Temple. You may either remain standing or be seated and no one's required to participate. Please come forward. Hello everyone. Thank you for having me. Let us stand now unbowed and unfettered by arcane doctrines born of fearful minds in darkened times. Let us embrace the Luciferian impulse to eat of the tree of knowledge and dissipate our blissful and comforting dis delusions of old. Let us demand that individuals be judged for their concrete actions, not their fealty to arbitrary social norms and illusory categorizations. Let us reason our solutions with agnosticism in all things, holding fast only to that which is demonstrably true. Let us stand firm against any and all arbitrary authority that threatens the personal sovereignty of all or one. That which will not bend must break, and that which can be destroyed by truth should never be spared its demise. It is done. Hail Satan. Thank you. And the Satanic Temple bringing out their after-school Satan Club. Hey kids, let's have fun. After-school Satan Club. Science projects, puzzles and games, arts and craft projects, and nature's activities. Parents, your children will learn benevolence and empathy, critical thinking, problem solving, creative expression, personal sovereignty. After-school Satan's Club are taught by volunteer teachers who have passed criminal background checks and have been vetted by the Executive Ministry for Professionalism, Social Responsibility, and Superior Communication Skills. The Satanic Temple is a non-theistic religion that views Satan as a mythical figure representing individual freedom. After-school uh, after school, Satan Club does not attempt to convert children to any religious ideology. Instead, the Satanic Temple supports children to think for themselves. All after school Satan Clubs are based upon a uniform sibilus that emphasizes a scientific, rationalistic, non superstitious worldview. Jane's Adam Elementary School, sponsored by the Satanic Temple After School Club. And this is just a permission slip for you to go and join in with the goats. Interesting stuff. Those, I guess, would be our future humans. So what's the issue? Wherever you are, hope this finds you well. God bless.